Hello, how's everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, I'd like to follow up on the video I did yesterday on radial gradients. Uh, one of my followers contacted me by email and said that I had my percentages wrong between the inner and outer ring of the radial gradient, and I did a little research and he was exactly correct. So I just want to get a video out to clarify what was in the prior video to make sure everybody understands what the degradation or the gradient should be in a radial gradient. Also, I didn't get to a couple examples that I wanted to show you with the radial gradient, and I'll throw these in after this real quick update. To start out with, we're going to grab our radial gradient. I'm going to hold my shift key down, and I'm going to drag out to make a perfect circle. I have the black-white overlay turned on, and that's why it's looking the way it does. So the radial gradient uh, flows from the center to the inner circle. It is 100%. In the entire inner circle, 100%. Then from the inner circle to the outer circle, we go from 100% to 0%. In the prior video, I said it went 100 to 50 and then 50 to 0. In actuality, from the center to the inner ring, it's 100%. And from the inner ring to the outer ring, it goes from 100 to 0%. All right, I hope that clears everything up. Now let me just show you a couple more uses for the radial gradient just to make pictures of people because we looked at landscapes yesterday and we're going to start with this photograph right here and we just want to make it just a little nicer. To do that we're just going to grab a radial gradient and we're going to throw it on. Let's turn this black white off and go to the color overlay and I'm going to make my gradient about the size of the central part of the subjects and then I'm going to increase our exposure about like this then we're going to come up here and say subtract select subject and that takes the the light the exposure from the gradient off the people and now we have a really nice background light a backlight and not only that and we can rotate it around maybe get a different kind of light look to it maybe a little kind of angle light coming in we'll straighten this out about right here all right and it'll hide the pins and we'll do a before and after. Got a nice like studio lighting going on. Real easy with just one radio filter. Select the subjects and take them away. Take the light off the subjects and you get a nice portrait lighting. The next one is an outdoor concert venue. And it's a now we want to use lighting in the back of the subject and lighting on the subject. And we have to actually do two different radio filters with intersections with that. So to start out with, we're going to select our subject and I'm not too worried about it being real fine because we're just doing lighting and it won't really matter all right and then I want to come up here and say duplicate and invert now while I'm on the inverted I'm going to darken it just a little bit and on my subject I'm going to lighten him up just a little bit and we're going to start with the background so we want some light like stage lighting coming across the performer about like this. So we're going to go to our inverted because we're working in the background and we're going to intersect with the radial gradient. Now when we put this radial gradient on, let's stretch it out and let's flip it around. And we want the light to come in just about like this. We'll make it a little wider. Move our center pin, grab our option key and stretch this out because I want more of the center from the top because remember this is where the brightest light is and then light falls off here and now let's just turn up the exposure and as you can see it's lighting up behind the performer and not on the performer because we're intersecting with the background all right so we'll just keep it about like that for now we're going to hit it with the adjustment uh, slider just a minute once we get the other one on now we want to make sure the light that's coming in behind the subject also hits the subject but nothing else all right so we're going to go to the subject here we're going to go intersect oh, i'm sorry intersect with another radial gradient and we're going to draw that radial gradient in and spin it around so it lines up with the first one that we put in all right, I might stretch this out just a little bit and we're going to use this portion here where the shadow should be to light him up because we don't want to hit him with the full light right here. We want to hit him with this kind of light here. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit and as you can see we're lighting up the performer and not the stage and anything else around him. All right, so we put a little light on him just like this. 
And now let's look at our two lights. So this is the background. If we turn this off and on, you can see that we're just hitting the background and not so much the performer. And then the light that hits the performer is this inter uh, intersected mask with the subject. And that looks a little bright. So here we can come and bring the, the amount slider down a little bit. And then we'll go up to the backlighting and bring that down just a little bit. We look at the before and after about like that. And if we wanted to add a little more drama to it, let's go ahead and create another mask with a radial gradient. And this is going to be more like a vignette. So we're going to draw it across the whole screen. We are going to make the core area about right here where the light is going to be the brightest. And then we're going to come up here and hit invert. Now it's inverted, I can start darkening the edges about like this because it was a you know an evening concert, so we just want to have it a little dark. Now if you look at our before and after, before, after, before, and after. And here is our backlighting. I'm sorry, right here, here's our backlighting. Turn it off and on. Now if we looked at this without the intersect, you can see what it, how different it would look. So here's our intersect. Let's turn the intersect off. See, it lights up the whole back. But because we intersected with our radial, we're only having the light here. And let's do the same thing with the subject. So this is our subject before it's lit and after it's lit. But look what the radial gradient intersect does. So here's what it looks like with the radial gradient intersect, without the radial gradient intersect, and with the radial intersect. Big difference, big difference. It lights up the whole man, but with the intersect, we're just lighting up the area in which the light will come through. Well, I hope this helps out. I apologize if I put out a little inaccurate information at first, but that just reinforces. If you find anything wrong with the videos or you have questions, please send me a note or an email and I'll take a look at it. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to admit it and correct it. I appreciate everything you guys do and everything you said. And I will talk to you later.